Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so excited to share with you today. It has been a busy week with a stamp sale yesterday. It was a 24 hour stamp sale. Did you guys take advantage of that? Leave a comment if you placed an order and got some discounted stamps. I really had a hard time narrowing it down, but I did pick out three stamp sets at the end of the day. Uh, the Badger, <laughs> Badger Besties. There was a greeting stamp set with the sunny thoughts. And oh, what was the third one? There was another one I had been looking at. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that sale and got some good deals. Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here and you can see me okay. Let me know if for some reason, like the screen is cut off or something. Um, I have I have some cards to share with you before we get started, some happy mail call, and then I have three projects ready to go to share with you. I'm kind of excited about these projects. I feel like each one is a little bit special and a little bit different, and I'm definitely going to need your help on voting a little bit as I... <laughs> As I put these together, um, I could I could use a little bit of your help. Hi, <laughs> hi everybody! I'm so glad you're joining tonight. I don't know how it's October 21st. This month is just flying by. Now, um, I am working on some Stamp of the Month projects uh, for my card class. I do every month, and I am so close. I just have to finish one design, which I'm hoping to work on tonight. And so if you are waiting to hear about that, um, I hope to have details to post tomorrow morning. Um, so stay tuned. I'm really excited. This month I will be featuring the Whimsical Trees, Whimsy Trees, I forget what they're called, um, from the mini catalog. Um, but before we get into that, I don't have them ready to share with you today, <laughs> but, but before that announcement, we have Thursday Night Stamp Therapy, so let's dig right in. First of all, if you are a new viewer, I'm Julie Davison. I live in Champaign, Illinois. I've been a demonstrator for 19 years. I can hardly believe that. It's been so much fun. Um, you can shop with me if you'd like in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. I love to spoil my customers and do send out free project kits and a free gift when you order $40 or more with the host code. So I'll get all that information in the video description when we're all done in case you want to shop with me. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm always happy to assist as well with ordering. Um, I don't know what else. I don't know. Leave a question if you have a question. <laughs> Christina, you're not a new viewer. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to do an introduction. We've been doing Thursday Night Stamp Therapy weekly Thursday night lives at 7, 10 p.m. on Facebook for um, going on two years now, which is super exciting. So sometimes I forget I've got new people who don't know who I am. So if you're a new viewer and you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer while we're live or I will answer your comments afterwards. Okay, I got some fun cards in the mail. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to share these with you. Um, I've been having so much fun with the great big card swap. And if you, if you aren't familiar with that, then you're definitely going to want to check that out. Um, it's something I'm doing every month where you send a card and then I share them all and then you get one back. Um, and so if you were in the last video showcase, I'm, I'm still trying to get your cards organized and sent out. I apologize. It's been a busy week. <laughs> uh, but watch for those coming back in the mail soon. Um, so sometimes people send me extra cards. So some of these are extra cards that I received during the Great Big Card Swap, and some of them are just cards that were just sent to me. So here's one from Carrie Koss. She sent in some beautiful cards. I cannot wait to show you. And she said this... These of designer paper was left over from the the really fun card that she has to share. And I cannot wait to show you that one. So you're going to have to tune in on Tuesday, October 26th to see Carrie's amazing card. She always has some super fun cards. And this one is really, really special. So Carrie, thank you for the bonus card. I love the gorgeous leaf die cuts and the beauty of the earth designer paper. This one comes from a former team member, Kim Kasanik. Oh my gosh, I love these cute little mugs. <laughs> this was a celebration stamp set last year or the year before. Um, I love how she's done it in orange for um, for Halloween. Just so much fun. Kim, I miss you. <laughs> I do miss you so much. I loved getting your card in the mail. Thank you so much. I'm thinking of you too. Here's a beautiful card from Maya Galantine. Maya always sends amazing cards for the great big card swap. And she sent this bonus idea for me. Plaid tidings in the background. 
Um, oh my gosh, what was the name? A Wonderful Year, I think, was the name of this tree set from the last catalog. So fun. And then Harvest Hello. Maya, thank you so much. She says, Happy Thanksgiving. This card is for you, Maya. Thank you. You always make my day with your beautiful cards. And it truly did make me smile. Hey, how are you guys coming along on the 31 Days of Happy Mail? Oh my goodness. Are you sending cards every day this month? I have to admit, I'm a little bit behind. I need to get caught up again. Here's a beautiful card from Linda Vanderspool. Linda sent a belated happy anniversary card to me and my husband. Thank you so much, Linda. We celebrated 21 years of marriage earlier this month on October 7th. So it was so sweet of you to send this beautiful card. Uh, Fifth Avenue Floral, I think, is the name of this um, stamp set. Blast in the Past. That was a fun one. Love the outline and the colors here. Like gray and yellow is such a rocking combination. Linda, thank you for that beautiful card. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> this one is from Janet Castro. No confetti in this one, but check out this fun fold. I think I just saw that Janet shared some more cards like this in Julie's Stamp and Spot Share and Connect group. So make sure to go check out her other Halloween cards using this fun fold and googly eyes, which got smashed. <laughs> got smashed in the mail. Um, Janet, thank you for your card. It always makes my day to see an envelope with your return address. Thank you so much. Check out this one from Ruth Moore. Oh my gosh, she's got a little clear embossing in the background with the flowers. So beautiful. This is the Nature's Harvest Bundle. One of my favorites from the mini catalog with some fun colors. Soft sea foam, a uh, little Highland Heather, and the yellow in there too. Really beautiful card. Ruth, thank you so much for, for sending that. I love spoiling my team members and um, she was sending a thank you card for a stamp set that I had sent her. Um, we have all kinds of drawings and opportunities to to win free stamps and free stuff. Speaking of which, I was working on some team packages today, so I still have more to send out. But team members, if you're waiting, you've got a happy meal coming. <laughs> oh, okay, well, let's get started. Speaking of the great big card swap, um, these were some that I pulled out. So these were from the last great big card swap. So these are going back out to people. I just haven't had a chance to sort the cards, but I pulled them all because they have this fun book binding um, fold and I've been wanting to try it. And so today I'm going to try a book binding fold. This one is from Ellen Arsenault and this one is from Susan Ferguson. Then we've got this one from Carrie is a Carious. So you can see they're like glued here on the side. Um, that one's coming undone. Oops, sorry, Gary. Uh, here's one from Lynn Werner who sent me an extra. Thank you so much, Lynn, for that. This one's got a little bit of a skinnier tab on the side. And then this one is from Sherry Dugan, the card that she sent me that I shared last week. Same book binding kind of fold. So we're going to do a book binding fold. And this card really inspired me with the quilt kind of look to it. So that reminded me of another quilting card. And I'm going to do this other quilting card. But if you like the look of this one, who is this one? Ellen, um, Ellen's card. You can do three quarter inch squares across the cardstock and then run it through the embossing folder. So we're going to do a different kind of quilting, but this one is really beautiful too. So um, here's where I need your help. One of the things I need your help for. On our little quilt, we're going to do some embossing. And so I would like you to leave a comment and let me know. We're going to use letters this time. So A or B. This is time-worn type or tasteful textile. Which of these embossing folders do you think I should use for my quilt card? Um, this one from Ellen used the tasteful textile, but I thought the time-worn type might be pretty too. So um, let me know what you think, A or B. You get a little vote. Meanwhile, I'm going to bring in the pieces that we're using here. I've got some measurements. I'm using the Peaceful Meadow designer paper. This is from Harvest Meadow. Sorry, not Peaceful Meadow. Harvest Meadow from the um, mini catalog. Love these colors. Soft Succulent, Calypso Coral, Bumblebee, Misty Moonlight, Sahara Sand. Just gorgeous colors for the fall. Double-sided paper. So you've got some bee patterns that are uh, monochromatic, but just as beautiful. So I'm going to use some squares of this paper today. And I've got six squares. I'm choosing 
two different patterns and two squares of each. Um, and so these squares are one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch. So six squares of coordinating designer paper. And then um, for the quilts part, we need a piece of cardstock that's two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Um, and then uh, some layers. So this is three and a half by three and a half. And then the white is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So these are all gonna layer together for the quilt. And then for the card base, we're doing that book binding fold. So we're gonna do a four and a quarter inch by 11 inch um, piece of cardstock. I'm using crumb cake, and you're gonna score it at four and a quarter so that you have the square front. Let me turn this this way. And then five and a half in the middle, and then six and three quarters. So what happens is, like this is where it would fold in half, and then you score one and a quarter inch from either side of that. So those line up like that. I guess you only have to do the front. You wouldn't have to do the back. You could leave that plain. Now that I'm, I haven't done this card before, so, <laughs> so I'm kind of figuring it out. I think you could go either way. I don't think it's bad to do it, but I don't think you have to do it. Now here is, uh, here's a trick that someone told me about, which I thought was super clever. You can turn this into a gift card holder uh, by not gluing the entire thing closed. So we're gonna use some tear and tape, and we're going to t add some tape now I'm using this uh, gift card as uh, an example so that I make sure that the gift card actually will fit into this spot. Um, so I'm making sure to keep that glue or the tear and tape all the way, sorry, I'm getting out of camera there, all the way to the edges. Okay, so uh, we're gonna close this and let's see how this turns out. Okay. So then you have your, your book binding fold, right? This is the look we're going for. And then the gift card fits right in there. Isn't that clever? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that out while we're assembling the card. So here's the book binding card base. Okay, that was pretty easy. <laughs> you can decorate it then however you want. And I just shared some ideas with you. Oh, you know what? I had another piece of paper and I think I accidentally put it away. Um, I have a little piece of designer paper for the edge. I was cutting all my cardstock and then I had like all these scraps and I was like, what are these scraps doing here? Well, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to cut a new one. One second, oh, maybe this one fit. That looks a little small, I'll just cut a new one. Okay, so this is going to be for the side, and I'm gonna cut this at four inches by one inch. And this is gonna go right here on the side. So let's go ahead and glue that down. This might be my favorite pattern from the paper. I just love the, the scripty font. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to do the quilt part, okay? And we're gonna do the embossing, so I have to go back and look at your answers, but first, let's do some gluing down. I told you all the measurements, and I will put these in the video description, so you can check that out um, when we're all done. So we're gonna take the smallest square. This one's the two and a half by two and a half inch square, and we're going to add I'm trying to decide which of the two papers. So we're gonna do two of these in the corner and then the other ones are gonna go, I think I'm gonna do the um, Calypso coral pattern. Okay, so glue on all of them. You can use your glue of preference. Um, I'm gonna use some of the stamp and seal, but you could use also the liquid glue would be a good option here as well. And we're going to pretty much cover this entire square. So this is two and a half by two and a half. So I'm gonna add the designer paper squares in each corner so that it's completely covered. And I'm just alternating. So on the top, we're gonna to have two different squares and on the bottom, two different squares. 
And this is the piece that we're going to run through the embossing folder. So I asked you guys to pick A or B and we'll run it through and add some texture. So I'm gonna just scroll back up here really quick and see what our consensus is. Uh, okay, so Linda says A, Janice says B, Marilyn says A, Carolyn says A, that's two, three, three A's, four A's, a couple B's, so that's back down to two A's, three A's. Hmm, I think, oh my gosh, okay, I've lost track. It's pretty close, you guys. <laughs> You're back and forth. I'm trying to keep track of, uh, I'm tr kind of trying to keep track of which one is the winner, but, um, <laughs> I am, um, I'm going to go with A because it seems like that is the one that's getting the most votes. So let's get the die cutting machine out to do this. For the 3D embossing folder, we need the platform and then the gray specialty plate. So we're just going to run this through really quick. Um, we do have some embossing folders that fit in the mini machine. Um, and so if you only have the mini machine, you still could do die cutting on small pieces like this. The large embossing folder does not fit through the mini machine, so you'll have to get one of the smaller embossing folders to fit in the mini, but you can fit this piece in. So if you wanna make this part at home and don't have a big machine, you could just choose a different embossing folder. So I love the texture on here. It's really subtle. Um, and I don't think it sticks out a lot, but I think it's going to make a difference when we get the card put together. So let's, let's keep going with our quilt. So we've got this um, piece, which we have embossed. Maybe we should have embossed the whole thing. We'll see, I guess. Um, I'm debating whether to emboss this piece. Is that too much embossing to, <laughs> to switch it? Let's, let's see how it looks without. Okay, so this piece is actually going to go on diagonally. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I saw this technique at On Stage. My friend Colleen Magnus um, shared this during her demonstration of the Everything is Rosy product medley. So I just thought this was kind of... Kind of a fun technique with a quilt. Okay, so for the remaining squares, we're going to cut them diagonally. And I have to say, like, I'm not a quilter, um, so I'm not sure what this pattern is called. To me, it looks like a pinwheel, so maybe it's called a pinwheel pattern. If you're a quilter, you'll have to let me know if this, um, if this pattern has a more official name. <laughs> Uh, but generically, we'll just call it a quilt card. Um, okay, so now we're going to add the. We're going. Oh, we're going to add the triangles now since we cut them in half. Hopefully, I'm remembering this right. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat and look at my phone. Um, okay. Nope, I think I did. There we go, I think I got it right now. Isn't that cool? I really love the way that looks. So we're gonna layer this onto the uh, Whisper, Whisper White, Basic White cardstock. Oh, this is driving me crazy because this, I want that to go all the way to the edge of the paper. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so when you're making your quilt card at home, you may choose to emboss the entire like second layer only the center of mine is embossed, but you could emboss the whole thing. Um, and I, I could try to put it back in, but I don't know that that would be very successful. So I'm going to leave it just like this. Um, 
And we're gonna add that to the card here. I feel like I've just got extra sticky on my fingers tonight. I don't know where that's coming from. Okay, so our card is coming together really nicely, but we need to add some words. And so I picked out some sentiments from my favorite peaceful moments. This is this was my top pick of the sales stamps yesterday. I love this one because it's got lots of great versatile sentiments in there. Happy birthday with deepest sympathy. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, so I thought this would be I thought this would be a good one. And I'm gonna pick. We're gonna do a brown instead of black. Early espresso, I think, is gonna be a nice choice. So I was trying to decide what would be an appropriate. Um, oops, what did I just toss? Oh, I see. Oh my goodness! I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm playing gems. I don't even know where those came from. They're all over the floor now. Um. I'm trying to decide how to put the sentiment on here because I don't want to cover up the quilts, but I, <laughs> maybe it's just me. I feel like a card is naked if it doesn't, <laughs> if it doesn't have, um, if it doesn't have words on it. Do you feel like that? If there's no words on the outside, do you feel like the card is a little bit naked? Um, I'm going to wrap the linen thread around. I want enough to tie a bow, so I'm gonna wrap twice. I tried to cut it first and I didn't have enough. Oh my gosh, wouldn't this be pretty to do like a Christmas quilt? And then I could see this with the heartwarming hugs designer paper. That'd be so pretty. Okay, so we need a sentiment because I do feel like it's naked. Oh, <laughs> I see. okay, I'm trying to catch up on your comments. Uh, Janet saying it's pretty, it doesn't need a verse. Michelle says it depends on the card design. Marilyn says she does not put a, put words on them all the time. Tanya agrees with me though. <laughs> it does look naked. Um, it is a perfect way to use scraps. Yes, I love this little quilt. Um, okay. I'm, I, I want it to oh, be small. Originally, what I used was um, on the on the card that I was looking back on. I had like a doily, like a scallop doily here, and I really loved the way that looked. Of course, it's not current anymore, but maybe our sentiment needs to be like in a circle. What would you think about a circle? sort of mimics like what's going on there. We'd have to choose a different sentiment, like happy birthday. Um, since we already have some texture, Tanya's saying, would it show up if you stamp directly on it? Since we already have some texture, I'm concerned that um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't show up very well. Okay, you guys are saying it takes away from the 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 quilt look of the card. Okay, I understand that. What if we did like, like just a line, like a, kind of like a, Oh, 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 how about that? Like a tag. What does that work? What do you guys think of the tag? Punch a little hole in the tag and tie it out to the string for a floating bookmark. Um, 
good. Do we have a little hole punch? We have the Label Me Fancy Punch, which has a hole punch, see right here. So we can add a little, and then if we wanted to have a decorative edge, it didn't add much of a decorative edge, but it added a little decorative edge. Can we add a little more? That's kind of cool. It's not even, but it, <laughs> it worked out okay. Um, Julie says she does like this circle. Um, ooh, when you that's a good point. Robin is pointing out that the tag might not work so well when we open up the card. Let's, let's have a little practice. It does kind of get bent, doesn't it? Hmm. But maybe it's okay in the bottom of the card. Like that. I have this stitched tag that's from the picture this die. I like, I cut a whole bunch of those dies. It's the one that has like all the rectangle windows. And um, I'm gonna cut it. I don't know. I'm struggling. <sighs> ba -da -ba -da. Nicole says, cannot see that comment. I don't know which comment you can't see, Nicole. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to read your comments. Carolyn says, if you're going to put it on the bottom, put it on the bottom of the card. All, like all the way down? I think it needs to be up there. Hmm. I think you guys are saying a smaller tag. Am I am I reading that correctly? A smaller tag. Okay, we've got some options. We have tag hanging, <laughs> we have circle, and we have tag, which would be in the bottom left. Leave a comment and let me know which one you like. So tag, circle, or bottom. Those are the options. Tag, circle, bottom. And then... Do we... I'm just trying to see, like, what I have that's small. So a hello here and a for you. I kind of like the for you. Oh my gosh, I've never used this for you. It still has its sticker on. I like to put the sticker on the block and then peel the paper backing off. If you don't have nails, a piece of, or I mean a pair of scissors can help you get under that paper or the take your pick tool is another great way. And then put the, the stamp down and put the block over it. Then we have a nice straight 
a nice straight um, flat adhere adhesion. <laughs> Can I talk? Adhesion to <laughs> the cling rubber. Okay. Many of you were saying a smaller tag. So, is a smaller tag better? Okay, let's check. Move the twine over towards the score line, then put the greeting on the edge. Over farther this way. Um, tag takes away from the design on the front and You'd put the sentiment on the inside. Stamp in the triangle. Oh, down here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that interrupts the idea of the quilts. I don't want to stamp on the quilts. Mm, Michelle's saying to fussy cut the saying. Circle down in the corner. That's an interesting idea. I do like that the circle in the middle hides the middle, so if there's any imperfections there. Um, another option is, and I think I might like this little tiny addition. Maybe you guys won't. <laughs> but, but let's see. Let's see what we think of this. I'm using the Taylor Tag Punch to cut, um, to cut little flags. I love my Taylor Tag Punch. So what if we add this? What if we add the banner? I feel like it sort of ties in that, um, oh, I'm seeing lots of hearts. Yay. <laughs> okay. I think, I think we have a winner. I'm going to scoot this back over. Let's add this down. I'm going to do some regular adhesive to stick the circle onto the flags and then some dimensionals. Now, I know you guys have lots of opinions <laughs> when it comes to creating um, cards. And so I know when you're, when you remake this card at home, you're going to do all the things that you're yelling at me through the, <laughs> through the screen to do. Um, I know, I know you guys have some different ideas, so I cannot wait to see how you do yours. And if I didn't, if I didn't finish off the card, how you thought I should, then when you make it at home, you should share your picture of your finished card in the Julie's Stampin' Spot Share and Connect group so that we can all see the right way <laughs> um, how some, we can all see some alternative ways to create the quilt card. Okay, here is my version. I went with the circle and the flag and then on the inside, in case you missed when I put the card base together, it does, we did leave a gap. We only put ad adhesive at the top and the bottom. So we have a gift card holder. You can also do it this way, I guess. Um, but before I put that in, let's get out the um, Peaceful Moment stamp set. That's where the happy birthday came from. Has a great verse to go inside. Wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. Do you know anybody with a birthday in October? This would be a really pretty card to send to somebody who's got a fall birthday with the fall colors of the harvest meadow. If you had some extra pieces of designer paper, you could add that here too. In fact, that would be really cute to do 
I'm not going to take the time to do it right now, but you could do like little triangles of paper, like down here, you know, just like, I wouldn't that be cute <laughs> to do that? If I had, if I had some squares already cut, oh my gosh, I just need to do it real quick. <laughs> um, it's, if I don't do it now, I'm, I'm going to forget. So, so let's just get out really quick. Our scraps of paper. I should have some in here that I had started cutting already. Where's the other yellow? There it is. Okay, so quick tip when you're cutting your squares just cut an extra one and then you can do this on the inside so this is one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch So I'm going to add let's see Oh <laughs> I thought I put the right side on and then we'll just cut this off. Okay. Isn't that cool? I love that. I love it. Could save those for another card. Okay. And that fits our, our gift card in there. Oh, I love the way that turned out. Thank you so much for your help and helping me choose what to do and how to put on there. You guys are so amazing. Are you ready for the next card? <laughs> I'm scrolling past a bunch of comments that I've missed. And so I am so sorry. If you've asked me a question, I promise I go back and read all the comments afterwards. Uh, if it's not tonight, it will be um, tomorrow. <laughs> we aren't yelling, just making suggestions. <laughs> uh, if I've missed, uh, if I've missed a question, then I promise I will, um, I'll catch it later um, and give you give you an answer. Okay, let's move on to our next card. Um, I'm trying to decide. This one's already on the table, so we're going to go with this one next. So I shared some cards yesterday. I did a video, and I shared some cards um, using some of the stamp sets that were on sale, and I shared this card that Margo made for my birthday a couple years ago, and it, I forgot the name of the stamp set now that she used, but the stamp set was on sale. So I pulled this card to show you. And the In Good Taste designer paper is what Marco used. And someone said, hey, show us how to make that card. And so that's what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> um, I don't have this stamp set. Uh, I do have a paper, but I don't have the stamp set. So I'm gonna make my own version using this fun fold. So we're using an entire half sheet of designer paper. This is five and a quarter inches by 12 inches. I'm using the Sweet Symmetry designer paper and the In Symmetry stamp set. You can find these in the annual catalog. Kind of doing a throwback to the annual catalog tonight. Uh, this is a 12 by 12 paper, but um, I've cut it down so I can show you. Just beautiful, bright colors with these fun flowers, a little bit different kind of flowers. Um, maybe Scandinavian. They sort of remind me of like a Scandinavian flower. Um, and then I love the, the B sides again with the monochromatic pattern. So I chose this one, which is a little bit busy, but I think it's going to work out okay. So you need a five and a quarter by 12 inch piece of designer paper. And the scoring is really simple. The only thing I'm going to warn you is that when you're scoring designer paper, don't push too hard because the first time I scored, I cut right through the paper and then I had to get out a new package because I ruined the whole sheet. Um, so score lightly, <laughs> be careful. So score at two inches, four inches and six inches. So um, I'm gonna just kind of fold this and you can 
see I'm doing it a little bit backwards now okay oh here it is on the front where's my other score line there it is I actually want this to be the other way with the blue designing <laughs> the blue design showing there we go Oh, this is my favorite pattern, I think. I love the Night of Navy. The other colors in here are Just Jade, Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, and we actually do have the small flowers here, our Flirty Flamingo. Um, so these are the colors that we're using today with that In Symmetry stamp set. Let me give you some other measurements, though, really quick. So the card base, we're going to put the designer paper on this. This is just a quarter sheet of cardstock. So this one is... Um, four and a quarter by five and a half and then the whisper white cardstock which is going to go on the designer paper is three and three quarter inches by five so this is the layer that we're going to put together like this and actually before we glue this part down we're going to do a little stamping there but we can glue the designer paper down onto the card base let's grab our stamp and seal for that And we're just going to center this. Should have an even layer all the way around of the Night of Navy cardstock. Okay, I'll put these measurements in the video description when we're all done. So you can check those out if you want to make this at home. Now for the layering, let me show you Margot's card again. She had two layers, one in the front and one in the middle that were attached to the designer paper. Margot used the stitched rectangle dies. And so I used the same dies to die cut my layers. I chose basic white and Calypso coral for these layers. And so these are gonna go like this and layer on top of each other and then we'll glue them on so that they collapse on top so you can only see one at a time. So before we do that, let's do some stamping. These are really fun and bold and bright colors, the in symmetry. So I'm gonna do each panel a little bit differently. I'm gonna put them all out here. And we'll start with the front one. For the front one, I'm doing the sentiment, hey friend. So actually I'm gonna start with all the sentiments. So we're gonna do hey friend, I think at the top. And the next one is going to be, thanks so much. And we'll flip to the bottom. And then for the inside, I'm gonna keep this on the left side because you'll be able to see the right side a little bit. So I'm gonna keep that on the left. You are perfectly unique. Okay, so that's all of our Night of Navy. Now let's go back with the colors. On the front, we're going to do um, this tulip. And we're gonna add the stem with Just Jade. I feel like I mounted almost every single stamp in this set. Now this stamp set has um, the two leaves like this, so you can stamp them on either side of the stem. And in hindsight, maybe I could have stamped that a little bit lower. If we turn it over, we don't get the same stitching effect. So I'm just gonna leave it. In hindsight, I would say start with the stem at the bottom and that will help you. I don't know, but then you don't wanna run out of room. It's hard to say because I could have stamped the hay friend a little lower and it all would have worked out, but mm, trial and error. <laughs> okay, on this next one, Let's see, I was thinking of doing the, um, maybe I wanted that to be the other way around. Too late. Um, let's, let's think. Um, maybe some of these smaller flowers. So let's do, And we have some individual leaves. Is that weird? It's like a deconstructed <laughs> flower. I don't know, I'm gonna go with it. Um, and then on the side here, I was thinking, um, well, I, I mounted this big one, but I'm not sure that's gonna work. So let's do some more of these flowers, just sort of like, um, Okay, forgive me for stamping off the edge. I know I should have grid paper down and you guys are probably all either laughing or yelling. 
Um, oh, where do I want to put that? I really want it to go off the edge. Did you see what I did? I just licked my finger. <laughs> I do have baby wipes somewhere, but um, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so we've got our pieces stamped. I think those are going to work. Um, just some simple stamping, really. So now let's do some layering. And we can finish off our card. First, we're going to layer these onto the Calypso Coral die cuts. Marco used some Stampin' Dimensionals between these layers, and I do like the way that looks, and that could be a good... That could be a good way to add dimension. I've already put mine down, so we're going with it. Then this is going to go on the inside. And we see a little peak of that designer paper all the way around. Okay, so first up is the Hey Friend. Oh, I love how you can see some of the the flowers, except this is going to drive me bonkers. We need to fix that. Oh, Julie, you're crazy. I know, I know. Do, 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 do. What? It's magic. Don't even ask. <laughs> oh, let's add a little flower. I was debating about putting one here, and I didn't want to because I thought it was too close to this one, but I do think it needs to even out that spacing so it's going to be just fine let's put it back on the card sometimes I flip it over to get that good rub without rubbing the ink okay um all right I'm going to actually do the middle one first and then I can see where it is when I add the other one so in this one only adhesive on the side so that you don't totally glue your card closed I'm centering that in this space that looks about right and then closing this and now I can see where this one is and I can line it up perfectly over the one right underneath it if you feel like your adhesive is not strong enough you could use something like tear and tape here for these edges Okay, there's our card. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Hey friend, thanks so much. You're perfectly unique. I love how uh, the sentiments sort of go like in a triangle, up, down, and then back up. Now, if you wanted to add some color here, you could add some leaves. I think that might be, um, that might be a nice little touch. On the front, I was thinking it might need something. And so I did get out some of the Just Jade ribbon. This is a ribbon that coordinates with the suite. And you could do like a little knot. Although, you know, I'm thinking what I might like better is doing um, some white twine and doing a bow. Let's see how that looks. I love white twine, especially with bold, dark colors like these. I think the white twine is just perfect to kind of offset those dark colors. Sorry, I'm off camera with my bow tying. <laughs> just doing a little uh, bunny, bunny ears and then looping it together. I don't know if I like it actually. What do you think? Bow or no bow? Leave a comment. Let me know. The other thing that you could do with this card um, is you could take this ribbon and you could wrap it. See, we ha I had two pieces that I added together here. I don't need to. So let me, let me show you the other thing I was thinking. You could take the ribbon and you could tie it around the entire card like that's the end of the roll I have such a mess guys I 
and it kind of holds the card closed. <gasps> I didn't tie that very well. A lot of the um, a lot of the comments I'm seeing is no to the twine bow, but what do you think about the ribbon wrapped around? I love the um, I love the gold in this jade ribbon. I think it's really beautiful and adds just like just the right amount of bling to this card. Do you guys fuss with your bows like this too? Oh my goodness. All right, yes, yes, yes. It helps keep the card closed. And I think it really ties in that green. Looks like a lot of you like the ribbon all the way around. So I'm gonna stick with that. Oh, we have a hot little mess going on on the desk. So I just need to do a quick little boop, boop, quick little cleanup. And um, I showed you the paper. You know what I didn't show you was more projects using the stamp set. However, I don't know where they are. Um, let me grab them. Because... I really do love this paper. So let me just show you really quickly some other cards that I've I've made. Oh yes, I love that one. And this one. This is that picture this die that I was telling you that I had that stitched rectangle from. Okay, I think that is all of my sweet symmetry cards. Let me show you what we've got. Um, I showed you the designer paper already, and so I've used a lot of the patterns on these cards. The Biggest Wish is the stamp set that I used for the Happy Birthday and the Thanks. Really simple cards here. I just love these colors of the designer paper. This stamp set is bundled with the border punch with the, the leaves, and so that's kind of a, a fun little accent to add. And then this is the double slider card. Do you guys remember when we did this one? I feel like it's not showing up quite <laughs> quite on camera all the way. If you haven't seen the um, the video for this, I'll put the, the link in the video description so you can check out the double slider card. This is a really fun one. Okay, so sweet symmetry in symmetry. This suite is in the annual catalog, really beautiful. And that's what I used for um, for this card with the kind of accordion paper. That was really cool. Okay, are you guys ready for another one? Of course you are. <laughs> I have a, an in-person stamp club that meets once a month. And so this morning we had our stamp club meeting and we made some projects. And some of the projects we made were ones that I've already shared with you, but the next one is one that I haven't. And this is another one that was inspired by a card I shared yesterday. So yesterday, the Sailing Home stamp set was on sale, and I shared with you in a video this card, which is a gatefold card that has like an extra long flap, an extended gatefold is what I was calling it. Um, so this one um, was one I thought, oh, I need to do that again. I think I even said that in the video. And so I decided to go back to the annual catalog again, and I'm using the Simply Elegant designer paper. Again, this is a 12 by 12 paper. I can just cut it down, but holy smokes, can you see all the flashing? <laughs> this designer paper has foil accents in copper, gold, and silver. It is so gorgeous. The back side of the paper is grays and black, basic gray, basic black, little very vanilla and whisper white in there. This designer paper and the coordinating stamp set and bundle 
elegantly said, is so perfect for creating cards for weddings, anniversaries, thank yous, birthdays. Um, and so I thought I would recreate this card using the elegantly said. So this is a project that we did in Stamp Club. And we're using those colors, basic black, basic gray, very vanilla. This elegantly said stamp set has a coordinating punch. I'm going to have to look it up because I do not remember the name of the punch. Um, oops. Here is the punch. Let me, let me look up the name of that really quick and unload the rest of my stamps from the box. I dropped it again. Okay, let's grab the catalog. Let's check it out. Elegantly said, um, page 69. Okay, this stamp set was on sale yesterday as well. The punch is called the Elegant Tag Punch, and you can get them bundled together, the Elegantly Said stamp set and the punch together for $36.75. Really beautiful projects to make cards and little, oh, I like those gift boxes. And then here they're showing you how you can punch that tag and make a longer version. So if you want to have a longer one like they've done on this card, then you can stick just one end in and punch and then stick the other end in and punch the other end so you get both both ends of the design. Well, today I just punched it once, just the regular way. Um, for this card, I'm using a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. I'll put the measurements in the video description, but this is just a standard half sheet of cardstock and we're doing a standard gate fold. So for the gate fold, you score at two and one eighth and six and three eighths inch. So the center is four and a quarter, which is like your standard, standard size card. Okay, and then we have two pieces that are also the same size, very vanilla and basic gray. The very vanilla is uh, four inches by five and a quarter, and the basic gray is the same. So this is going to go on the inside, and the basic gray is going to adhere to one of the gate, one of the gate sides, so just one, and then this is gonna kind of fold over, which is what's going on here with this card. On this one, I used an embossing folder, but for this one, we're just gonna do some stamping. So let's get out. We're definitely gonna need a grid paper <laughs> uh, for this project. So let me grab one. Um, I think I have one that I folded in half, so I don't have to get the whole thing out. And we're going to use basic gray for stamping the designs. So first up is this large lace design. And this is going to go in the corner of the basic gray. So we're stamping in the same color, basic gray on basic gray. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's just so elegant. Next up is this long lace stamp. Um, and we were talking in Stamp Club, like it could go either way, right? You could have the scallops go down or you could have the scallops go up. And there's not really a wrong way. You know what, I think I'm actually going to do it twice. Once at the top and once at the bottom. Mm, that's pretty. Now the words I picked out, we're gonna do basic black. Not basic black ink, the memento black. That's the only black ink pad we have. And I'm making this a thank you card. But of course you could do any of the sentiments. There's many in the set that will work. So thank you for the inside and for the tag on the front. It says, all the things you do are simply amazing. Did I stamp crooked? I'm just gonna turn, oh, you know what? I had a little, a little blurpy blurb there at the bottom. Hmm. Let me grab a scrap. I want to redo that. There's so much going on in my room right now. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to stamp and then punch, but for this one, I think it's easier to 
punch and then stamp. That one looks a little better. And then I have a piece of the glittered black organdy ribbon that we're going to use on this card. So let's start putting things together. Um, for the inside, the very vanilla is just gonna go right down in the middle. Then we have this strip of designer paper. This is one inch by five and a half inches. This is going to go in the center on the right side. I'm sorry, the left side. And that cardstock that we stamped on is gonna go on the right side, but only, um, we're only going to put adhesive so that it doesn't stick the card closed. So I actually put it on the flap itself so that I didn't put too much on. Oops, I do want it to line up. I want it to line up with the very vanilla so the very vanilla is not showing. So just kind of be aware of that. So you see how I had it before? You could see it a little bit on the side. So we want to just center that so it's right over the very vanilla. Oh my gosh, so elegant. And then this ribbon is going to go, I'm going to just kind of put it on the side and the tag is going to hang there. Here is our original inspiration. Let's go ahead and add this down. We'll use a little piece of tear and tape to hold the ribbon down. This is my favorite, favorite little trick for ribbon is using the tear and tape to keep it flat. You could either do it on the back of the tag or directly on the card. And I'm going to go on the card and then cover it with the tag like that. Tag's going to go on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And again, you gotta be careful here. If there's part of the tag that's hanging over, you don't wanna put dimensionals on that part because you don't want it to stick the card closed. So I'm being careful to only put dimensionals on that left side of the tag. Oops, shoe fly. <laughs> um, and there we go. Oh my gosh. Isn't this so elegant and beautiful? I think this card design and these colors and stamps that are going to be so perfect for, like I said, wedding cards, anniversary cards, like um, just gorgeous. All the things you do are simply amazing. Thank you. There's the finished card. This is called an extended gatefold card because we started with the gatefold and then we have this panel that extends out and kind of adds like a another layer to it. Really easy. I think you could substitute any designer paper and really make this kind of card layout, um, you know, with anything. I like the, the little skinny strip of designer paper, and so then you maybe want a smaller element and then another one down here in the corner. Oh, I'm so glad you guys love this card too. I'm seeing your comments come through and you're so very sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, that was our third card. Oh, before I sh before we recap, I do have a few more card ideas to share with you using this designer paper in this suite. This one is by Donald Shevsky um, and she has used that swirl in each corner and then a little bit of the designer paper in the middle. And then these are two that I've made. Just really kind of simple cards. On this one, I punched twice, like I punched and then I turned it around and punched the other end. So just kind of some fun different things that you can do with that punch. Really elegant here. Again, the colors are basic black and basic gray, which I was a little bit worried about how dark they are, but I think it works out really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you as we recap, which of these cards is your favorite? Did you like the Harvest Meadow Quilt card? that is a gift card holder inside? Or did you like this fun fold with a sweet symmetry designer paper or the extended gate fold with the Simply Elegant? Leave a comment and let me know which card is your favorite. I always love hearing from you so I know the kinds of cards that you like to see in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. If you would like to shop with me, you can go online to my store at juliedavison.com shop. I'll include all of the measurements 
in the video description as well as the current host code. So make sure to plug that in when you order. If you get $40 or more before tax and shipping, you'll qualify for my October project kit, which will be sent at the beginning of November. Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure to come back on Sunday for Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie. We've got some great projects to share with you again this week. Happy stamping and have a great weekend. Bye.